Hello and welcome to the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program's homeowner webinar series. My name is Jen Marvin and I'm the Florida Yards Neighborhood Statewide Coordinator. Today we have Eva Pavone speaking with us about gardening with kids. Your microphones have been muted. If you have questions, please type them in the chat box and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Please stick around until the end to take our exit survey. It helps me give you the kind of programming that you like and lets us know how we're doing. Our next presentation will be June 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern time on designing with intent. And um, that will be with Taylor Clem. Um, I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Um, Eva Maria is the UF IFAS Residential Horticultural Agent and Master Gardeners Coordinator in Osceola County. She's been working with the UF IFAS Extension for over 19 years. During her time in Extension, she has worked with school gardens, community gardens, and the plant clinic, helping identify plant problems in the landscaping. Working and teaching about horticulture to kids is one of her favorite things to do. She's been a She's been drawn to foliage since she was a young girl. Eva Maria worked at Disney Horticulture for three years as a gardener. During her time there, she was involved with the International Garden and Flower Festival and was part of the Kids Gardening Dream Team. Um, without further ado, uh, please take it away, Eva. Hi, good morning. And first, I want to thank you for joining me today and I apologize because my camera decided not to work today. So you will not be able to see me, but I promise you I'm a, a real person behind the camera here in Osceola County. But it will be great because then if you are visiting Osceola, I will encourage you to, to stop by um, Osceola County Extension Services and come and meet me and then you know I'm real, okay? So let's start and I will tell you, um, kids gardening is one of my passions and we will talk about that. Okay, so today we're going to have, this is the overview of the class. We're going to have, you know, my introduction, why it's important to garden with youth, get them interested. I'm going to give you some tips about how to get them started. Then I, we're going to talk about how to keep them started interested so because you know get them into it I don't know um, I have two kids and I a few years ago I cleaned my garage and I gave away so many um, crafts and stuff that I started with them and it was just one time deal and I made it I made a big donation to the school district between books and crafts and this and that so how to keep them interested we're going to talk about the basic tools that you're going to need the first steps on you know what what I need to do what are the first steps when we are starting gardening with youth gardening basics we're going to talk about the space limitations um, plan for the unexpected I'm going to give you some ideas and then at the end I'm going to give you a few resources that you can start this program Okay, or not the program that you can start gardening with youth. I would like to do this as interactive as I can. Please tell me in the chat if you are a master gardener or if you are um, a master gardener or you're a homeowner that wants to start talking, you know, how to start gardening with the kids. If you're a teacher, what, what is your role in the gardening um, world? So that way I know which areas I can talk more when we are, um, when I'm going through the presentation. Okay. So introduction, why I love gardening. So I will tell you that the main reason why I love gardening and why it's so important to me, um, I started as a kid, okay? So as long as I remember, I, um, I started gardening when I was in preschool age with my grandparents. My grandparents have a beautiful backyard. They had, the other day I visited the house. I have not been in the house for over 20 years and I was um, visiting, Puerto Rico so I went to my grandparents house and the yard looks way smaller than what I remember um, but I remember you know planting um, 
you know, doing the, the going and harvesting the peppers because we were cooking. Um, I remember planting the flowers like the rain lilies are one of my favorite flowers because my grandmother's front yard was full of those rain lilies. Um, so it, it, that's one of the reasons I love gardening is a way that connect me with my grandparents. And unfortunately, they're no longer uh, with me um, physically, but they are with me all the time because I choose a career that they planted that seed when I was younger. OK, so that's one of the reasons I love gardening. And when I started my degree in horticulture, actually, I started my degree and we were joking earlier about my camera not working, um, that I started my degree in computers because that's what everybody used to study in the 90s. You know, if you want to be successful, you, you have to study computers. And I lasted a year in that program. So I switched to horticulture and then my life was easier, happier. And then I've been doing um, you know, horticulture first. I, I did maintenance for a few years in Disney, um, like um, they, Jennifer said in my introduction. And I was part of the, card, the kids' garden and dream team, which she was a dream for me. So what is the perfect age to teach them gardening? So look at the two pictures I have in my slides. Those are my those are my youngest niece and nephew. Um, she, I think Ellie was probably six, seven months when I took her to the garden. I gave her the flowers. She looked at the flowers. Obviously, you have to be careful. You know, they they there is no ants, that there is no um, that they're not poisonous. But Ellie was exposed to gardening, to the wildflowers in the front of our building at a very early age. Um, and then on the right side is Gio. Gio is my nephew too. And he was starting, you know, to do his first steps when I took him to our back garden. And because he was a little older, I actually gave him some of the leaves, like the rosemary leaves, like the sedge, and let him touch that and smell it. And he was not a year old. Okay, so you can start at any age. Typically, I will recommend that at least they can seed. OK, on their own, um, just because it's, it's going to be easier for you. It's not going to be something that you have to, you know, hold the baby and also do some gardening. I will also tell you that when Ellie's um, sister, that she was in my first picture, and Ellie um, and Evan, that is Gio's um, brother, I used to bring them to the garden too, and then give them like the caterpillars for them to touch. And it was a lot of fun to see their little faces, even that they were not planting, they were being exposed to gardening, okay? Can they teach each other? Obviously, Ellie and Gio cannot teach each other, but when they, you, what you can do, like if you have kids different ages, um, like I would say at the house, you can teach the older sibling or the oldest cousin, and then they will be your helpers, okay? But it has to be a process that you will take time to make sure you have like lead, like train the trainer. And that will give a little responsibility to the older ones, to the older kids to be involved, okay? So yes, they can teach each other, just you need to make sure they, you know, kids like to have fun and they like to, to joke on each other. So make sure that they are, that you trust the kid, that ki the kids trust you when you are starting um, letting them be the leaders. If you are new to gardening, there is a lot of resources out there for you. And that's what I wanted to know if you were new to gardening. If you're new to gardening, but you have some kids in your life that you want to teach them and you want them to get involved with gardening, my first recommendation is that you educate yourself first a little. You don't have to educate yourself a lot. You just have to, you know, do your basics, like maybe attend some of the the extension services, workshops, and programs, and learn the basics of 
vegetable gardening, you know, learn the basics of pollinator garden. Um, if you have the time to become a master gardener, that's a great opportunity for you to then get the more extensive program and, or education that then you can give back to your family, to the community, the church, whatever you are teaching kids. Okay. Also, there is a lot of different resources out there. One of my, my suggestions when you are looking for resources is make sure it's research-based information, that they're not trying to sell you something that is not going to work, um, that it is, it is proof um, that works. Um, and, and, and I will show you some resources where you can learn the basics. But I will say that your number one stop, if you are not familiar with extension, should be your local extension office. If you're in Florida, fantastic. And if you're in any other state and you happen to join our webinar, we have extension services in every state and in every county. So we can help you if you don't have any gardening experience. The other thing is that my class today or my presentation today is mainly for a home-based garden, okay? Even that um, some of the basics that we're gonna talk here and you can use it at a school garden, it should be for a small school, for a small group of kids or for a small garden, not for a school-wide um, kids garden okay for that we have other classes and it's more extensive and there is a lot more questions and guidance that I have for a school garden or a community garden okay why is it important to garden with youth okay they can you're, they're gonna use their motor skills okay how to pick flowers how to play with their old that motor skills, you know, their vision, their walking. They're also going to do social skills. They're going to practice social skills, especially if you have more than one. They're going to learn, you know, how to work together, how um, we can set priorities, how we can communicate. That is very important today's day. They're going to enjoy outdoors. They're gonna go out. I have my oldest, um, he was all about reading and video games growing up, but I happened to manage to take him outdoors for some gardening. And especially when, we're, when we were doing community gardens, he, I will bring him with me and he really enjoy. And today, you know, he's, he's a lot older and actually he, he's doing research for the space center and he actually enjoys, you know, seeing, we were talking the other day how NASA works with the environment. And, you know, I know that comes from those days that I took him to the gardens and he enjoyed those outdoor. It's funny because now there is no way for him, you know, it's very hard for him to, to do some hiking. Like I cannot convince him, but I know at one point that is going to come back to him as an adult, but you know, they need to enjoy their outdoors. They need to see what is around and see, see, you know, what is the, the wildlife there is out there. Vitamin D is an important vitamin for us and we get it from the sun. So instead of having to take some of the vitamins, it's better for them to go outside and enjoy, you know, the sun. We have to do it the right time of the day, obviously, but it's, it's a source of vitamin D. Fresh air, you know, they need to get exposed to the fresh air, you know, do those deep breaths when they are in the garden and just enjoy. I know it's in the summer, it's really, really hot, but lately, I don't know you, but lately here in Florida, the, the, the weather has been absolutely perfect especially like for, for um, gardening. So it's, it's a good way for the kids to go outside and enjoy the, the fresh air. Also teaches them responsibility. If is, this is a, a, a garden that we have in the house or let's say it's a small area in a church setting or maybe a small area in a classroom setting, you can give them some responsibility and it's going to teach them okay so they know they have to water the, the the garden they have to look for insects all that pride is very important i the, all my years working with the kids and in in different programs that i have it is so 
refreshing when I when they come to you and say, "Hey, I this is my tomato." Um, the last my last group before COVID, it was uh, I had kids from all ages, from five years old, five six to seventeen. My seventeens were helping me with the younger ones, and one of the ladies, the girls, the young girls that was there, she. She was very excited because she was going to have the, she was going to make sofrito with her abuela, which if, if you're not familiar with sofrito, sofrito is a mix of onions and peppers and um, culantro that you mix and you use it for cooking. It has onions and all the stuff and you use it in, in the Puerto Rican culture is, is one of the main things to cook pretty much absolutely everything. And she was so excited that she was able to provide grandma with some of the peppers and some of the culantro that they were going to use for the sofrito. So it, it, her face was priceless. Um, and she actually brought grandma to the garden and she told me at, at that, that specific girl that was the first time she was planting something and so from going to the first time she was in a garden and planting a pepper plant to be able to harvest and then make sofrito and then eventually cook with the abuela or the grandmother can you believe how proud she was you know i those are the things that that one of the reasons why it's so important to garden with youth and it's a perfect way to spend time together I'm sure that was my grandparents way to spend some of the time with me when I was younger okay so let's start about getting them interested my suggestions, and I have done this with my nieces, um, with my nieces primarily, is visit local farm. Okay, so what you want to do is before you start investing a lot of money and time into what I want to do at home, it's like go to local farms, go to you picks, um, that they get that exposure is like, hey, I'm, I'm picking up the strawberries. So for next season, I can bring strawberries to the house and plant them. Um, you know, there is peach um, here in Osceola County, there is a peach you pick, but just look for you pick farms and take them for the weekend or for the day and, and see, let them enjoy the nature in a bigger scale. Okay. Um, so also go to farm stands. If you have a, a, a farm stand close to you, let them see what, you know, how they can get food another way that is not just from the supermarket. Take them to a different way, um, you know, a different place to enjoy how to get, you know, farm products. Basic gardens. Go to demonstration gardens. Um, I will say here in Osceola County, we have a very small demonstration demonstration garden around our building but I promise you most if not all of the extension offices around the state do have a demonstration garden that is free so I will I will suggest you contact your local extension office ask them if they have a garden and you know if you want a mini tour ask them for an appointment I'm not saying that they do that I just tell you ask them if they will do it a lot of our demonstration gardens they have signage that you can walk through the garden without without an agent or or a volunteer helping you um, but take them to those gardens you know they're smaller than a botanical garden and you will get you know you probably will encounter and see a master gardener or the agent and even a 4-h um, student the that is part of the garden. Also, you can visit botanical gardens. If you go to the different botanical gardens um, websites, they do have kids gardening areas that you can go take the kids, see what is their interaction, if they have some interest in the garden. Um, so visit those botanical gardens. I know Lou Garden has some activities for kids. I believe Buck Tower here, that's Central Florida. I am not familiar with any of the other gardens um, 
besides those two around here, but they have a lot, they have reading times for the kids. So you can do a combination of activities when you visit the botanical garden. Another option is visiting a community garden. See if there is a community garden around your, you know, in your community that, you know, in a church or in a park that they have vegetables and some edibles and see if they have a program for the kids and, you know, involve them there before you start at home. It's going to be a little more complicated because it's not just by your house, but it will give them that interest, okay? Visit farmer's market in general. So if they are like the master gardener farm, uh, plant sales are a perfect place to start. And it's not, look at the farmer's markets. I know like winter garden here in Central Florida has a weekly garden uh, market. Lake Nona has one, Celebration has one, San Cloud has a farmer's market that is once a, a month. Take them to a farmer's market that they can see some kind of experience of, you know, having a farm stand, like someone selling plants, take them. Visit, visit county fairs. That is a great exposure on gardening and farming in general because the animals are there. Like in Osceola County, we have a horticulture contest that that the kids bring their plants and we give them ribbons and they win prizes. So it is also a great place to visit. And another one is visit plant nurseries. Take them to a plant nursery, let them explore the plant nursery. Um, try, you can start at something like the big box stores and take them to the small area where the plants are because they're, they're maybe more accessible. But then after that, go to like the, the smaller nurseries around your community and see what they have to offer and let them explore and maybe start with one plant at a time. Then after we get them interested, then how we keep them interested. So I will say, Start with simple task, okay? With a simple task. What is a simple task? You are responsible to water. So if you have more than one youth or one kid, I will say week one, Andy is watering, Angelica is pulling weeds. Then week two, Andy is pulling weeds, Angelica is watering, okay? So give them just one task at a time. And if you have more than one, rotate those tasks so they are learning the different skills in the garden. Also make sure it's age appropriate, okay? So you don't want to have someone that is three years old, four years old, maybe they, they're not gonna understand the amount of water a plant needs. So that probably is something for an older um, kid. Um, so keep those, those tasks appropriate. Let them be part of the process. So as you are planning to have a garden with them, let them be part of the process. Do we want to start with a butterfly garden or we want to start with a vegetable garden? What is their interest? And let them be part of the, pro the process. Don't come and just say, okay, we're going to do a butterfly garden because they may not like it. And they may be they, they wanted to see a tomato plant growing. So let them be part of that process at all time, not just the first season, you wanna make them part of the process all the time, okay? When I used to visit and we're getting ready to start visiting the schools again, when we used to visit the school, I always asked the kids, you know, we will, we will have a list of what are the vegetables they like and, you know, based on, on what they like, that's what we were going to plant. So we will choose the plants and the seeds based on the kids' taste, you know, what they like. Instead of like, okay, I'm going to bring collars and carrots because that's, that's what is easy to grow. And if I did that, the kids will never be part of the process. They're like, okay, this is another task that I have to do. It's not my garden. This is Miss Eva's garden and I just have to water and take care of the garden. So that's why it's important to have them as part of the process. We have to make sure we have appropriate tools and that applies to everybody. I wish you could see me, but I know um, I have one or two master gardeners from my um from my county, I'm not even five feet tall, and I at tall, and I have issues with finding tools that are appropriate to to my size. Um, 
And I remember when I had my first job in landscaping, um, they had to special order my pruners because all the pruners were too big for my hands. So, but that applies to the kids too. So you don't want to have a heavy shovel for them to plant or a super big bucket they, they cannot carry. So you need to make sure you have appropriate tools that are, are, are perfect for their size and what they're doing. The other thing that I think the I believe is very important, and I am a gardener by heart. I am a horticulturist. For me, it's all about plants most of the time. But if we want to keep them, you know, engaged in our garden, um, don't 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 limit the task just to gardening. You know, after you plant it, and then you're just waiting for the seeds to start spreading why we don't decorate some pots why we don't do a scarecrow or a bird bath or plant tags or rock painting other activities that while we're waiting that two to three days five days two weeks for those seeds to germinate let's keep them entertained let's keep them engaged you know visiting the garden doing other stuff um i will tell you a few years ago i, I want to say probably like 10 years ago i was invited to I was asked to assist in a middle school around here. It's middle school and high, high school around here that they, they their courtyard was all concrete. So this, this place was donated to them and it was not originally a school. So they turned the property in a school and it was like a, like a plaza. So there was very limited amount of area, very limited dirt or places where they can plant. And it was a school, an art school. So we start talking and I was like, there's nothing that I can recommend here. You know, like nothing is going to grow because of the, the soil, the shade, you know, many, many conditions that were there. So after probably an hour talking, I just suggest to the school, it's like, why you don't do an art competition and do an garden art exhibit? in the courtyard that will add the color that you're looking for that will add you know like distractions for the kids that is not just concrete and then I will suggest to do some plants here and there and they did it and it was it's pretty awesome I went years later for for an event there and I learned from the the students that I was visiting that they changed the art every year because what they do is one of the sculptor teachers they they show the art in the courtyard so that is not directly gardening but still related with a garden and so, so if if you are like having trouble with gardening find something else for the kids to do they're still related with the garden but it's not directly gardening and for example here in Florida there is not much that we can do in the summer uh, if, we, if we're talking about vegetable gardening, so how we get them entertained and engaged with our gardening, maybe in the summer is the time to work with the plant tax, is the time to create the skirt growth, is the time to build the, 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 the pots or the raised bed that we're going to use in the fall, okay? Let them have fun in the garden so let's take some leaf and then do leaf rubbing let them making mud pies you know i remember doing that and i remember making a whole feast a whole dinner and soup with leaves and pot and mud pies with my cousins um start journalism you know start doing a journal with the kids what is going on going on in the garden and maybe you know they can communicate with you that way um Assign tasks after planting. So we we have a beautiful garden and seeds and maybe some seedlings. Then now what? So that's when you assign the, the watering, the charting growth. So maybe you want to have a chart somewhere in the house that they put the planting day and how fast the plant is growing. Weeds. If we don't do weeds, we're going to be in trouble in a few, few weeks and maybe in a month, okay? So we want to make sure we assign that task. And in sex scouting, I will say that that one is probably for older kids, probably middle school age or probably fifth, sixth grade, that they go out every day and see if there is any insects, if there is any issues, okay? Set up a warm farm 
and start a compost. And those are other tasks that the kids can get involved and they will keep them interested. Don't forget the tools, okay? So it is important that they have gloves, they have hats, um, they have watering tools. I will suggest depending um, the age, but I have discovered this new, the, the, the very light um, hoses and you can find them for anything from $25 to $100, $200. They were very expensive three, four years ago. They are not expensive anymore. And I have one here in the office, one in my house, and you put that in a bucket and it's very light. Okay, so I will suggest that you that you invest in one of them. Some protection, very important. When they're outside, you want to make sure you have some protection and maybe depending on the time of the year, but pro bug protection too. Um, you want to make sure you have right size tools. Okay, if they are kids in elementary age, you want to make sure their shovels and, and all their tools are appropriate for them. Um, buckets because it's very easy just to carry the buckets and pull the weeds and then put them in the dumpster or in a bigger pile that you have than having to, to carry all that around all the time. Spades, cultivators, rakes, and hoes. Um, I will suggest you can get them in, in especially the kid size, some stores like Big Lot, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, they actually target. I have seen the leader, the leader tools. Um, my suggestion is wait until the season is over and you will find it in, in the sale rack. Um, but we have few here in the office, for examples that we have used with, with the kids. First step, again, get them involved with the planning. Okay, they need to be part of the planning. Um, if you are not sure and it's like, okay, it's May 17 and I want to start a garden with the kids. I want to get them involved. But remember, if you're in Florida, summer is not the right time to start a vegetable garden. So let's start with pots. Let's start with something small that they can just take care of for the summer until we can start our fall garden. Okay. Or you want to start with a garden, a garden dish, you know, start with smaller one, you know, um, just three plants there, find this perfect spot in the house where it has light and has, you know, um, the good conditions for that dish and start there. So those are those, those two will be like, if you're not sure if you can get their interest into garden, that's how I will start. Then if you want to start outside start with a small area three by three that is pretty small if you go to some of the garden centers they actually have a pot that is like two by two that's also a great suggestion that you can start and you don't have to make a big investment okay identify the area that you want to work if you decide to go outside but even if you started with pots with dishes you also have to find that perfect spot at the house in the house to put your garden okay or the pot or the garden dish and grow what they are interested okay so if they like flowers let's grow flowers first and then eventually it's like hey what about if we grow some tomatoes and you will see the flowers too so give them the, the that interest like if they like vegetables but then you do you need the pollinators or would you want to plant for pollinators? Then you start with vegetables and then eventually you can add some pollinator plants in your garden. Maybe they they just like indoor plants, you know? It's not perfect for, for it. That's what is perfect for them. And this little guy, he is my, oh, my other nephew. And that was, um, he wanted a, a fly trap plan for Christmas and you can see his face um, how happy he was when he woke up Christmas day and he had that under the tree so you know it's like listen to them and 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 see what they want and then you probably like in my case um he's not here he's in Puerto Rico but if he was closer to me before I buy that plan I will learn about the plan how to take care and then give
Hey, Ava, can you hear us? Oh, your audio went off there for a second. Let's hear, see if we can hear you again. Can you hear me? We can. We, we missed the last 20 seconds or so of the last slide. Okay. Can you hear me again? So you want me yes, to go back to this one, to the first steps? Uh, maybe just the three points at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. So let's repeat the, the, the first step. So we talk about already get them involved. You want to make sure, you know, you may want to start with pots, something small and have them choose the pots and the plants that you're going to plant there. And maybe this is the perfect, you know, you want to start right away. You got excited about the class and you're like, okay, I'm going back home and, or I'm home. I want to have something with the kids right away. Start with pots, let them be, you know, starting with something small instead of making the big investment. Or you can start with garden dishes that will be inside they will take care of the garden dish. And if you need information about garden dishes, you can email me or email any of the um, extension offices. And we have a great publication about garden dishes and how to start. And actually is, is for kids. Or if you want to start with a three by three area in the backyard, I will suggest that you start with a raised bed. Ava, we lost you again. Ava, can you hear me? Yeah. Ava, can you hear me? We've lost you again. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, <laughs> there you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Internet here is weird sometimes. Sorry. Um, so identify the area in the garden centers. They have like the two by two spots that you pots that you can buy. So if you are not willing to start the race bed outside, that is perfect. I have two of those in my house and it's perfect for four vegetable plants. And that's a way to start. OK, grow what they are interested. If they like flowers, start with flowers. If they like vegetables and they are all about eating, you know, and, and what to what what I can eat from my garden, start with that. Maybe they like indoor plants and like this little guy, he wanted a fl uh, flight trap. Um, he's my nephew and he that's what he wanted for Christmas. And look at his face. He was super happy. And I think the plant's still alive and he's only seven. Okay. He's in Puerto Rico, so I don't see him often, but he, look at that face. So he was so excited and he loved going to the garden, to the nurseries and garden centers and buying plants for the rest of the family. Okay. So gardening basics, um, location is a key. You want to make sure that you have at least the six hours of sun if you're doing vegetables. And then base the sun exposure is going to base on whatever you're planting. OK, so if you want to go with some shade plants, then you want to make sure you find a spot in the house or around your house that has shade. OK, so that is very important first. And this is one of the principles of Florida friendly landscaping is right plant, right place. So you need to to identify your plan. What is the perfect spot for that plan? And then if it needs sun or not, or if it can handle a little bit of shade. Access to water is a key. You can have the most beautiful garden. And if the garden is a, is a hazard to water the garden, you're going to give up. The kids are going to get tired of carrying watering cans, you know, across the yard to water. Um, I had that happen to us all the time in the in the schools. I always give them a suggestion that it needs to be close to to water source and they don't want it there. So it's hard sometimes and then kids just lose interest. Soil quality, depending on what you have, um, maybe you need to add some organic material to the garden and start on paper. So before you go to the garden centers, um, just get a piece of paper, have some drawing, decide what you want to 
plan because that way first you go to the garden center with an idea what you're going to buy. So, you know, you only have space for two tomato plants and lettuce. So that's what you're going to buy. But if you go just like without any plan and you don't start on paper, then you're going to buy too many plants and either you're going to waste your money and time or your neighbors are going to be happy because you have, you're going to give them some plans. Okay. So tallest plants on the north side and that it helps with the shade to the, the smaller plants. Okay, if you don't have much space, don't worry. Containers is a solution. So you can start with the containers if you if you live in an apartment or you don't have a like the new the neighborhood the, where my sister lives is they have like a small um, they look like townhouses. They're separate houses, but their lot is so small that they definitely cannot have a garden. But then they can do container gardening. But one of the things is you need to make sure you have a good drainage. That container garden has drainage. It's not you're going to have issues with root rot, um, etc. Okay. Use potting soil. Make sure that you buy potting soil that you know that you don't, you know, you don't want to get other type of soil because it's either too heavy or too light. You need to water frequently and sunlight is important. Again, it's all depend on what you have, okay? So you wanna make sure that it's expo exposed to this, the correct amount of sunlight. Plan the unexpected. What about if it's not growing? What I'm gonna do? What is happening? You know, is are the insects taking over? What I'm gonna, what is gonna happen? What I'm gonna do with the kids? It's okay. It's part of the process. Okay. They will be excited to know, like, hey, this is not growing. This is what happened in life. Let's then move on to the next season. One of my suggestions is if you're planting vegetable gardens for the first time with the kids, I will I will say, um, can I will say the start with. So let's say you have a three by three garden and that's how you want to start. Start with seedlings and seeds. So when you have, when you have the seedlings, you have kind of some instant success right there because the, the seeds are already germinated and they can see the plants growing and then you have the seeds on the other side. So that is one of my suggestions. That's what I always do um, because that way the kids get excited all the time. And then you do that the first season and then maybe the second season you only do seeds, okay? Um, but again, you want to visit your garden, your, your extension services. They will give you some connections um, or not connections, some classes. We have a lot of different programs and publication that are available for you. And if you are in Florida, okay, if you are in Florida, we have a great planting calendar for vegetables. And also we have a great planting calendar for other like perennials and annuals and anything that you you want to plan. One of the things I will say, check for your um, zone. If you are um, 9B, it, we are here in Central Florida 9B, but I will suggest that you check your zone bay, and then based on that is when you want to start you know, what, what you're going to plan. Here are some ideas. So you want to start small, start with themes, like container gardening. Just start with three container gardening, maybe, you know, a raining day, you can decorate those container paint them and then after the next day that it's not raining then you plant the garden and then you have them in the front the front porch or the front door and they get very excited because it's their project okay and they have to water it and you have it accessible and they see it all the time they're gonna remember to water okay garden by age so if you have different age groups in the house like um my my sisters they have babies but they have teenagers too um so the two babies in at the beginning, they're under three years old, but they have teenagers too. So my two sisters. So if they have a garden at the house, they have to plan, you know, 
what leader area is for leader Ellie or Gio, and then what areas are for Evan and Anneli because they're older. Okay, so also theme garden. If you don't know where to start, just do a pizza garden, do a salsa garden. Maybe you want to do a white flower garden, you know, like only white um, flowers, maybe just yellow. So create something that they will be, that is a theme, that they, they feel like engage with the garden art garden so you want to have some flowers but then you want them to paint rocks you want them to create the stepping stones you know you want to have a beautiful garden that they can uh, paint later or be inspired and create a poem you know something that is is inspires them to to be artistic if they're into art pet garden so if they have dogs or cats maybe they want to plant they want to make sure the plants that they're planting are not um are not um, poisonous or sensitive to any of the animals but then also that the garden still beautiful but is still as accessible to to their pets and they can still play with their pets in the garden or do you want to start with succulents they're easy to grow and then you may want to just have an area in the garden for them that is specific for succulents and these are just some ideas because there is an endless list that we can go over. And this is a topic that I probably can teach for five hours and I will never cover all the information, okay? So I wanna show you some of the resources I use all the time when I'm you know, working with the kids or when I first started working with them, um, that they, they are very good. And you and at the end, there will be a, the, the websites for you to look but kids gardening is a website that has a lot of different information um, they have learning tools they have a store they're on they're a nonprofit organization and if you look here if you're a teacher or you work in a school they have for educators so those are specific lessons if you're working in a diff in a specific age group or age or grade level Okay, and then the bottom one is for caregivers is for at home activities, but if you're like if you're homeschooling or you're working in a school or, or like a more um, formal garden, you know, education, then you want to go for the educator section. And if I have time, I will go specific to the website and I will show you more stuff. You can subscribe and they say send you a, um, newsletters all the time and they also have blogs where you can go and, and learn from others um, it's pretty cool they have if you work in the schools they also have grants opportunities for the school teachers to um, apply junior master gardener um, this is from extension services they're based on in texas but we use it all across the united states um, it is junior master gardener is pretty cool and it's very interesting you can have it with a group of kids or you can have it just with your own um, kids the, your own youth in your life and they have a lot of different curriculums based on age level interest like they have the junior master gardener program but they also have literature in the garden so you remember when we were talking about the art this is one that if you have someone in your life they like to write read poems music literature in the garden is a great curriculum also they have um, learn I cannot see the specific name, but this one that in the middle that says they has the big goal, um, that one is a nutrition and gardening. So it, that, that curriculum has nutrition information, cooking uh, recipes, but also the gardening education too. So it's pretty cool. Um, they get certificates, they can join other groups. Um, they have a, a lot of different um resources out there for you and also I have used two or three they also have one for wildlife let's say your kid is more the kid in your life is more about wildlife and they like birds and they like you know the the ocean and they have fishes there is one curriculum for them under the junior master gardener program 
4 H. Um, this is the national website. They have a gardening at home program. Um, if you go to their website, they have a lot of different um, resources there. So if your kid is in 4 H, which 4 H is part of extension services, um, they can have their um, record book and they can do a whole programming garden. And this is the, the national website that I'm going to give you the links to. And then for Florida, we have a very short or, or not short, it's not short, but we have a specific 4-H program handout that you, that they, that you can see and, and look at the different activities that are related with the 4-H Florida gardening program. And then contact your local extension office and say, hey, I saw this gardening project Project, how I can get involved, you know, can you, can I contact the, the horticulture agent in your office and we will get involved. Well, I cannot speak for the others. I can speak for myself. I will get involved if you're in Osceola, but I'm sure we all love to teach kids in, this is a great program. They have step-by-step. Step. And if you want to start a 4-H club or you're in a school, you can take this curriculum and it will give you some information how to start. Okay. Then I want to end with this. You have the chance to plant a seed on something very special in the hearts, minds, and spirits of your children as your garden together. So, and that's from Kathy James. And I will tell you that that's what my grandparents planted on me. And I really, really enjoy um, gardening. And I really enjoy, you know, sharing the educational information with others and some of my favorite experiences are when I go to the schools and, and I have the opportunity to, to work with kids besides my own family members. So remember that and doesn't matter. It can be something small or big. It can be with a kid that is one year or a kid that is, is 40 years and we're still um, uh, young in, in our hearts. So just remember that doesn't matter. It's about, you know, sharing the, the time and helping each other. So any questions, you can either type the questions or unmute yourself and ask me. And if you're like shy and you don't wanna ask me right now, my this is my email. You can email me, it's epavon5 at ufl.edu. And you can email me, I'll be happy to share more information with you or you can call our main number or you can like us in on Facebook is gardening in Central Florida, and this is how it looks our page right now. Um, there is where we, if you're local and you're in this area, um, you can see what is our calendar of events for other classes that we offer here in in Osceola. Okay. Thank I have you, one Eva. more. And there is the resources where I got the information on the websites that you can go. And actually, there is two other um, websites that I didn't add in my resources, but it's Kids Garden Community. And they have a bunch of information and people with other experiences. And Planet Natural also have a section on gardening with kids. Um, so there is a lot of different information. Um, there is conferences if you want to learn even more. So just let me know if, if I can help anyone in the community. Thank you, Eva. Um, that was a really great presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't think we have any questions yet. Um, anybody have questions out there? We've got a lot of thanks so much. They enjoyed the, the presentation. It was a wealth of knowledge. Um, no questions out there? Okay. Um, well, uh, thank you, Eva, for um, coming and talking to us today. And um, we really appreciate all of your, your knowledge and your, uh, the information that you've given us. You're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've, we've haven't had this. Oh, here's a question. Um, where do you find small tools that aren't toys? I will say go to, I know we, 
years ago, we bought a bunch of those at, at um, I just said the place earlier, um, Big Lot. Big Lot brings a lot of tools that are not toys. I have seen in Target also. The Kids Gardening website, I believe they have a section with tools also. Um, you can order them. So that will be like the, the I will tell you two, 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 three years ago, we ordered garden gloves for an activity that we had here. We have to order them through Amazon, but it, they were very good quality. Okay, somebody else said gardeners supply a mail order in Vermont mm -hmm. um, might have them too. Um, got some shorthanded tools at Ollie's. And here's another question. When working with butterfly gardens, have you ever had a problem where children are asked to do a program where children are asked to do butterfly surveys? No, I have not. And I will say, when you mean surveys is counting the butterflies, I am assuming. I would have guessed. So I will say, if you're doing that, um, I will keep, keep that to probably middle school, high school age, um, because that needs a lot more concentration and keeping track. So it's maybe a little, unless you have um, kids that are very advanced because it's, it's going to be harder for the little ones to do that. It's hard for me and I'm 48, so <laughs> to stay still and, and do it. Um, but that, that will be my suggestion. Okay, great. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions. So um, again, thank you for your time and um, have a great day. Thank you.